What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Decred in Depth. I'm your host, Angelo. And on today's show, we have the DCR Australia team, Zohan and Dave. What's going on, gentlemen? Good, good, man. Good. It's good to finally uh, be on this show and, and finally speak with you directly. Um, I, I know you have your thoughts on this, but I'd like to hear more from you, man. Yeah, we'll get into it. Definitely. Hey, Angelo, thanks for having us. Uh, I'm super excited. And I've been listening to your podcast for the longest time. And you've had some of the best and greatest from Decred. And uh, we're very thankful to be on here. Of course, anytime. Well, I appreciate you guys for taking the time to come on. So let's start with the basics, of course. Let's talk about your background and uh, intro into the CC space. Zohan? Yeah, so um, look, I've uh, worked in the tech industry for the longest time. I've traveled around the world, um, now currently based in Australia for the better part of a decade. Um, and my intro to the CC space is um, you know, not too fascinating, but I you know, used to work at a tech incubator and a VC fund. Uh, and uh, we just started seeing a lot of people coming through uh, the doors and talking about crypto. There was a lot of hype around it in terms of its sort of uh, uh, future potential and, and its implications. And I started to gravitate around the cool kids in the room uh, because uh, SaaS applications uh, and this whole fintech movement was getting a little boring. And um, I just got dragged into it and I became good friends with some of the people who are building uh, cool solutions in that space and in, in the tech incubator I was in. And uh, I have not looked back since. So uh, it's been pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I've been in the computer science field, software engineering, uh, information system field for uh, quite a while. And there's been many attempts of having some form of borderless electronic money for, for ages. And there have been... You know, they come and go, and uh, I didn't. When Bitcoin came out, I didn't take it too seriously at first because you'd seen these things come and go. But the value in having something like this is something that I knew was very necessary. Um, and then you start, you know, I'm sure you've heard this from a lot of people, but like you start seeing the prices go up and down, and you're like, far out, it's worth this much. You know, it piques your interest. I decided to read about it. It made a hell of a lot more sense than everything else. Uh, it, it looked like it could actually work. But then there was this whole, let's say, negative perception of cryptocurrency, particularly, you know, in the broader demographics, I guess, you know, being associated with criminals and, you know, people doing shady things. And so I didn't really want to be painted with that brush. So I didn't really get into it until sort of 2016, 17. When I say get into it, as in like get out there and and be a part of it in a way that, you know, exposed me to it, like people would see that I'm involved. And the reason that I did finally get out is that I started seeing events on on like Meetup and and uh, in Melbourne we actually had what was called the Blockchain Centre uh, set up and they were having regular events and I'm like well the police haven't raided them so maybe I'll go along and and talk to some of these people in person and I did and it became a regular thing and uh, made a whole lot of friends in the space in Melbourne uh, got to know a lot of what was going on the ins and outs um, you know who's doing what what are the different opinions but you know bring it all together it's something that I thought was really important I was just sort of concerned about what people would perceive me to be if I was seen to be involved with it uh, and going to the blockchain center and then outside of there meeting with the people, the friends that I made, it got me really, I thought, okay, it's okay. It's time to get involved. And yeah, I got into it. It became regular. Excellent. And how did you gentlemen hear about a uh, DCR and what attracted you to the project? Uh, nice. So that's a very, uh, that's a very good question because uh, a very good friend of mine actually came back from the States and um, he just moved down the road from me. We both went to high school and he went to the States. I came to Australia and he came back here. Um, and he started really going down the sort of crypto rabbit hole. 
And he was, uh, you know, coincidentally, one of the first, I think, one of the first few OGs of Decred. Um, and um, uh, hanging out with him, uh, he he was just nonstop talking about Decred, what it was, its potential, um, sort of what it stood for. And then he really educated me on cryptocurrencies as a whole and blockchain technology in its entirety. And through that, I just, you know, just by association, um, I started sort of uh, understanding it a bit more. I started seeing sort of some of the work he's doing. He had, you know, a lot of flexibility. He was traveling a lot. He was uh, very engaged in shaping the strategy, uh, the uh, initiatives, the engagements, um, and also the general roadmap in terms of how easily uh, he was communicating with everyone and how everyone was so accessible. And to me, working in a traditional company, I was like, oh, damn, that is very cool. Um, then I really started understanding it a bit more because the only exposure I had to that form of informality and flexibility was sort of in the freelance space. Um, but no, uh, you know, uh, just being around this friend of mine um, got me into Decred. Um, and from there on, I, you know, started to uh, say, hey, how can I get involved? I really want to learn more. And there's no better way to learn uh, than to just, get, you know, put yourself in the thick of it and just immerse yourself. And sort of that was my introduction to crypto and Decred. Um, it was slightly forced because I had no choice but to listen to him because we used to hang out every day. <laughs> but uh, but I but I thank him for it because at the end of the day, um, it uh, it has rewarded me greatly in in knowledge and experience uh, in uh, some pain, but uh, ultimately uh, a lot of uh, 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 sort of wins to come in the future. Dave, how about yourself? Yeah, look, something I want to talk about is is uh, the space and the community and. Um, you know, if you're involved in the community, uh, and that means Decred, and that means the broader community in the crypto space, and also, you know, you could go out to other areas too, such as traditional finance, uh, such as technology, those sorts of things. Um, I was involved in all of these things, right? And showing up to events, joining hackathons, uh, listening to presentations, networking with the people. And it just so happened that um, I, I started following Decred and, you know, I started putting I put watches on the different GitHub repos. I started paying attention to what was being said, reading a lot more, you know, material, watching the, um, the videos on YouTube, the Decred assembly ones, uh, and some of the ones that, that were recorded at conferences. And then eventually this same friend that... Um, that Zoe was talking about came up to me at one of the hackathons I was at. And he's like, dude, why don't you come on board with Decred? I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? And he, you know, presented all the things that I could do. Um, at that point in time, I began learning Go. And, uh, but, I, <laughs> you know, I looked at what some of the, some of the Go, you know, like Dave Collins, he's like one of my heroes, you know, like I look at him and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's going to be a long while before I can contribute any Go code to Decred. But, uh, uh, so I was like, okay, well, what can I do? Um, and writing was one of those things. Um, and so I, I tried to find anything that I could do. Uh, and then eventually I received a, a message from Jay-Z which was a surprise to me. And he said to me, look, you've been a contractor for a while. I'm like, oh, have I? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, why don't you send a photo and, and you know, de contact details and whatever else. And um, I'm like, okay. And then a few weeks later, I was talking to someone that we were trying to recruit for Decred. And I wanted to show him the contributors webpage. And I was like, oh, my picture and my name is there. Um, and I didn't know that they'd done that. So that's how I got involved with Decred. Got it. So you gentlemen run the Australian community. Let's discuss that a little bit. You know, how do you feel it's grown and how can community builders be successful in achieving in achieving their objectives when it comes to the DCR Australia community? Do you know, we could talk a lot about this. There's so many, there's so many points to be contemplated, understood, and then, you know, the learnings from that put into practice. We began our first active events at let's say, the worst part of the depression of late 2018, 
okay, in terms of the market. Um, you're talking the general crypto market. Uh, Decred was, you know, very low in, in price compared to only a few months ago in the previous year being so high up over, you know, it was a hundred and something dollars, um, depending on which exchange you're looking at, um, down to, you know, just double digits, low double digits. And no one was going to crypto events at that point. We went from, you know, the ICO craze in, in 2017 in Australia was nothing short of hysteria. At that time, you know, I was looking around on social media uh, for national based uh, cryptocurrency groups. In other words, like they're trying to say that there are cryptocurrency groups in for Australia or for England or for like, you know, India, for example. And I wanted to see what was happening in each country because I wanted to sort of understand what is the global perception because all I see in Australia is hysteria. Um, and we've gone from that to when, when Zoe and I started doing our first major event for Decred when it was at the low of the low. <laughs> and what was interesting there is that that was maybe the biggest event of the year, the one that we did, the very first one we did purely for Decred. We had over 100 people show up. Uh, which was big for us. Uh, we had a variety of people. So we had a few investment funds show up. We had tank companies show up. We had uh, people from uh, not-for-profits show up. We had developers show up. We had people who were just new to crypto space, people who were OG. Um, and we were able to also, we, we did a joint event with Apollo Capital. And uh, I was supposed to do an introduction to Decred and speak for maybe 10 minutes <laughs> I got pretty uh, enthusiastic and spoke for, I don't know, 25. And uh, that went so well. We all went out for dinner afterwards and the guys were like, how did that happen? Like it was, it was, it was raining, you know, it was like at a short notice and everything. And bang, after all the crappy no-show events that others had had, you know, the previous months, we suddenly had this event where everyone and anyone and like really important people really were interested yeah, it was great. One of the core facets of our strategy, uh, when you know uh, Dave and I were speaking about engaging the community, uh, was uh, the whole uh, concept of utilizing networks and establishing trust. So um, you know, we've both been very lucky to have a very uh, vast and diverse network uh, in Australia, and that sort of ranges from, you know. Uh, corporates to investors to the sort of community hubs that people sort of uh, uh, gather around um, and just uh, very smart people sprinkled around uh, each layer of sort of the, the industry. And just by association, you know, we just started tapping into them and saying, hey, would you like an event? Hey, can we host an event here? Hey, can, would you like to join us as a speaker? And just how that sort of works serendipitously is that people actually start uh you know, lowering the resistance to you and you have a much faster rate at which you establish trust with people by being associated to these more established networks. And that for us was a very, very useful accelerator in our plans to sort of move forward with engaging people, presenting to them, hosting panels, co-hosting panels, whatever the sort of uh, event was and how it was crafted. Um, and sort of that for us really led us to some interesting sort of places. And, you know, David can sort of elaborate on that further. Yeah, I mean, like this is the thing about community management or if you want to say that you are involved in the community, you are a community member, you're a community participant, okay? You got to be there. Um, I remember I was writing up something to help others out you know, in 2017, 2018, uh, and I wrote it in Matrix, and I really wish that I, I'd probably, I should have published that on GitHub, and I'm trying to find where I wrote it, but I could probably think of writing it again, and I can see that um, someone's added some things to the GitHub there, but look, some basic points, be out there. Um, if you're interested in the cryptocurrency space, go to cryptocurrency events. The thing is that you gotta you gotta be mindful of a few things, and this is very uh, this is very decred in my opinion. Is that you gotta be authentic, you gotta be genuine, and it helps to be polite. I found that that's really worked. We are in I don't know. It's probably like this around the world, but in Australia, we're in a landscape where everyone is trying to work against you. 
Okay, everyone is. You've got this dogmatic tribalism, um, and that could be whether they're Bitcoin maximalists, whether they're Ethereum, you know, denizens of Ethereum, let's say. Uh, and then you've got in a, a big way in Australia is also the whole enterprise blockchain space uh, and the various different groups that are involved with that. In fact, you might have seen recently there's been articles about uh, Australia's national blockchain roadmap which is is taking shape and so no one really you know no one really and there's this tribalism right so everyone's trying to talk against you so what works is what worked for us and it's been really successful is is going there being a part of it reading the room listening and being polite (laughs) uh because they might have their opinion but we need to see where they're coming from and see how we can find the similarities so that we can communicate and that worked really well. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, j- just to add to that is sort of one of the key things sort of you want to do when you want to, you know, um, gain people's attention is to before that truly understand their needs and wants. And, you know, that was core to a lot of how we spoke to people, understanding what they're interested in, why they're here, listening more than you're speaking and, you know, just making sure that you come across as respected individuals, people who know what they're doing, people who spend time in this in this industry and do not have uh, a very sort of malicious agenda, which uh, a lot of, you know, uh, people had during the ICO craze as they were pushing for people to invest in these projects, which were fundamentally uh, flawed by not only design, but just uh, on their principles. Hmm. Understood. Now, how do you gauge the impact of these events and everything that you guys have been working on when it comes to the DCR Australia community? Yeah, so this is this is the really important thing, right? Because before lockdown, we were doing a lot of in-person events. And when it comes to in-person events, it's not like where you have a website where you can tell how many people are coming to your site, what clicks they're you know clicking, how long they've been there, whether they're coming back. You don't have that. With in-person events, it's a lot of qualitative and quantitative in the sense that, well, what was the return on investment in us doing in this event? And what we found by listening, by paying attention, by being polite and speaking in such a way that it was for the sake of education rather than talking at people, as you find a lot in the cryptocurrency space, we found that people kept asking us to do events. Like we didn't have to, it got to a point where we didn't have to necessarily try and instigate the idea of an event ourselves. There would be another event that someone else would be organizing and they would say, hey, can you join in? Hey, can you present? Hey, we want you part of this panel. So that was one sort of metric to see that after each event that we did they wanted us to do more all right that was one metric the other metric was that the questions that we'd get asked during the event the questions we would get asked on social media or in personal chat or on phone calls after the event um often pretty much every single time after an event we'd we'd be we'd be networking and there could be someone there from a particular organization and some of them are very big well-known organizations they say hey can you meet with us next week? We want to have like a round table or we want to have like a private conversation. We want to understand this better. We have a focused conversation on these topics. That is a metric. Um, And the other metric that I like, which was a pleasant surprise to me, is that the word about Decred got around and some people in Australia of their own volition decided to write articles about Decred. And then I got in touch, like I remember with one of them, I got in touch with him. It was like, hey man, you remember we were talking it was like a long-term investment. Like here's this person that was like never heard Decred at all, uh, anything about it. And we were talking, I told him that I was involved with it and everything. And he was like, well, I don't know anything about this. And about a year and a bit later, he's written this long article about Decred and how fascinating he finds it. So sometimes these things go a long way. I mean, these are the metrics you got to go by. Now, I know some of you gentlemen deal with uh, businesses and investors and funds in Australia. What are some of the things that they expect out of the project? Well, it really... That's a, that's a big one because there's a diversity of interests and with a diversity of interests, you have a diversity of expectations. Um, it really depends on who you're talking to. Everyone's got their own angle as to where their value lies uh, and what their personal agendas are and their motivations are. Um, with Decred, I feel as though that there is a way to connect with most, if not all people. I really do feel that. I feel like Decred offers that. Um, 
let's talk about, for example, the enterprise blockchain space. I mean, let's, I know people have strong opinions on this sort of stuff and it's, it's difficult not to offend people <laughs> because we get invited to a lot of those events and everything. Um, but you see, when we start talking about the governance process in Decred, that gets their attention. Okay. They want to know more about how that works. And um, we explain that. And I know that there's work being done on having a kind of governance as a service um, system that, you know, Decred can offer organizations. And I, I, apparently that's coming out. Um, I know that there's a lot of interest there. So you see, we can even connect with those people. Um, then there's the people who are speculators. Okay. The people who are out to make a quick buck. Um, when you, it was easy for us to, to explain, you know, the, the fundamentals and the staking rewards and, you know, a lot of those people who got in for those reasons, once they dove deep, they started appreciating Decred for the other things that are valuable from Decred. The thing is though, what I love is that once you've had enough of a conversation from the angle that that person is interest, you know, wherever their interest lies, you start there. Once you've had a long enough conversation, you can bring it down to, well, Decred is actually kind of the whole value chain. And that that picture is then painted for them. And that's, uh, the expectation then becomes, well, hang on, this is a long-term thing. And that's where we, we that's where we try to get with each person that we talk to. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so I mean, something that David and I speak about quite often and as he just touched on was on motivations and when you sort of split motivations into two different segments one is emotional one's practical um so let's just you know take the persona of a uh or like a you know vc investor or a crypto investor uh in terms of a entity that has pulled money together and they're now in the space uh to you know uh, make some gains um from an emotional point of view um uh, Decred is very challenging to sell to uh, VCs that are focused on uh, cryptocurrency because there is not much price movement. And there is uh, not much, you know, historically there has not been a significant amount of volume compared to other sort of uh, uh, coins that they're interested in, as well as the kind of hype uh, that has been generated with some of the other sort of uh, uh, currencies. So it's been a bit challenging there. And, you know, there's, there's nothing to hide from. And, and, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the community and the, and the key contributors share that sentiment. Uh, but from a practical angle, when you deal with, and, you know, what, what David said is, you know, a lot of these people are fairly smart, uh, well to do and came from uh, finance backgrounds. From a practical level, they understand the need for decred. They understand why it's important, why it's a fantastic inclusion in their portfolio, what it tries to achieve, um, and their expectations on it are, um, when you engage the smarter ones, their expectations on it are it's a long-term hold. And because of that, their exposure to it is, is limited, but they have some exposure. So I think that sort of played against us in terms of onboarding a significant amount of people, but it doesn't matter to us is because the longer uh, sort of we wait for this crypto uh, sort of evolution to play out, the more the practical reasons become prevalent and why they, uh, you know, justify investing in Decred. So it's a matter of time and their expectations get sort of recalibrated to that to really understand the value Decred holds. But at the same time, we're really going against a big wave of these massive chain links that are doing 100x or some other projects, which, uh, you know, they, at the end of the day, their mandate is to maximize profit for investors um, that, that they've brought on. Um, so maybe that's something I could add to it. And, and it's become interesting because in Decred, there's a lot to gain in the long term, but there's a lot to fear if you allocate too much capital to Decred and not into other projects. Yeah, so the fear outweighs the gain in this instance. But I, I genuinely wholeheartedly see that changing. You know, it's funny. I, I actually do speak with fund managers that um, in, invest in crypto. And while they are trying to, you know, make a profit and make it as quick as possible, 
when I talk to them about decred, they like the ones that I've speak, spoken to, they very much value what decred is doing, even though that they might have that speculative attitude. Uh, and they're not just saying that to be nice to me. I know they mean it. Um, and I think that's something that as time goes on, more and more people are going to come to this understanding uh, that decred has got the staying power. Uh, decred is doing what needs to be done. And that's why it will always be there, I think. You know, Decred's development, one of the things that attracted me to Decred is that it wasn't hyping itself up <laughs> when I first, you know, got interested in Decred. It was focusing on building. And I had a look at what they were building. I had a look at the principles and I saw that there is some genuine authenticity. The ethos is good. It's consultative. It's community. It's, uh, it's a methodical logical progression in building out the infrastructure to enable and empower what cryptocurrency could do. And they focus on that, like Decred focuses on that before it focuses on hype and marketing. And I feel like, okay, once you've got a good, you know, I've worked in marketing as well. Once you've got a really good product, it's a lot easier to market. Now you could say that all of this sort of hype cycle pump and dump projects out there that's getting a lot of attention, particularly with what, you know, quote unquote normies are, you could say, um, you know, that, that brings in sort of the wrong attention, in my opinion, to the crypto space, but it's attention. And if they stick around, um, they come across projects like Decred. And some of those people really dive deep into it. I'll give you an example of that. That's Checkmate. Okay, he's in Australia now. Checkmate came, you know, you've, you've had him in podcasts before and um, you know, in other podcasts, he's said it himself. Like he sort of got in at the height of the whole boom and bust sort of thing. And, and he said that he learned from that and then eventually found Decred. He found it a lot quicker than maybe most people do. But um, when I speak to people uh, in the Australian community and internationally, because a lot of what we do is like with connections we've got around the world, this is the thing that they, while they want, might want to make a quick buck, they still value Decred and some of them are invested in it for the long haul. Yeah, understood. It's, it's fundamentally sound, especially in a space with so much noise. I, I agree. Um, gents, we're getting close to the closing time. Um, what are some final thoughts and your message to potential stakeholders out there? Do your own research. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, and look, try and understand what it is that you're getting involved in. Um, this is, this is once you, when you make the effort to do that, Decred begins to look a heck of a lot more attractive, uh, and get involved, have your say. That's what Decred's about. Um, and, uh, let's work together instead of against each other. David, that's actually very well put. Maybe uh, I'll uh, expand that a bit. But I think for us sort of is, you know, one of the first things is when you speak about Decred as a stakeholder, you have the uh, responsibility to represent Decred in the best light possible because of how hard the team is working collectively in the background. And it is an incredible to date experiment and something that will prove to be something that's even more established than it is in how so many people around the world are contributing in different time zones with different backgrounds and different skills to this. And I think each stakeholder should go out there and tell people how fascinating just that single element alone is before really diving into sort of how this uh, project is uh, working and, and what is working towards. Um, the other thing is sort of, I think my message to people is to really appreciate the, the deep foundations being set here in terms of the work being done, the quality of ideas, the quality of what's being put out there, um, and the caliber of people involved. The foundations are so deep that what we will be able to build on top of these foundations will be the tallest skyscraper possible that is imaginable. And that's why I see fantastic sort of uh, potential here. Um, and the other one is is to never sort of um, let go of the you know end vision of what we're trying to achieve here. We are in a very volatile macro period uh, and a very volatile sort of period in our history, whether it's sort of political, societal, and sort of economic. Um, Bitcoin and Decred and maybe Monero to that extent will play very critical roles in the future of our society. And we have to make sure that we keep contributing. 
we keep compounding that energy and we keep bringing people onto this movement because this has legs to make a difference. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for having us, man. Really appreciate it.